Small rules here. You're recording, right? Laura? All right. So what we're doing is we're recording these as well, and we'll put these on the website. We'll send them out via YouTube or email on YouTube. So if you do miss a night, which we don't want you to do, you have to make it up, essentially, quote, unquote, make it up. Answer a few questions about what we went over, and we'll go from there. So if, if you do happen to miss it or have class or practice or something comes up, you've got to let me know what it is, and then we'll, we'll go from there. But we're recording tonight. We'll record tomorrow and Thursday and on, on Monday as well. All right, so you asked if I was going to show an old school basketball video. I don't have that crap. This is something that we put together here. Um, it's got a lot of video. It's going to put you in groups, or as crews as we call it, um, and then we'll discuss plays. So you'll give me a definition for certain things, and then we'll watch plays and say, why is this a travel? Why is this a double dribble? Or why is this a foul? And we'll talk about it. So a few housekeeping UNCW rules here. You need a UNCW one card to play. Regardless of who you are, you have to have a one card. You need it to get in the building. This typically doesn't affect you, but if they don't have one card, they, they're not allowed to play. If I show up, put my shoes on, get my shorts on, I'm ready to play, and I don't have my one card, I'm not allowed to play. Um, it says teams will check in at the shed, which is false. They will check in outside the back gym. I'll blame Ryan Himes for that. Um, supervisors and scorekeepers will be primarily responsible for this. You may have to do it every once in a while. Uh, and then always check players for jewelry. What jewelry is the only jewelry we're allowed to wear? My returners. Medical alert. Medical alert. Yeah. And it's got to be taped down. So if somebody has diabetes, a heart condition, whatever it is, if they're going to die, I need to know how to fix them. So that's the only thing we allow. Wow. If they have any of uh, wristbands on, necklaces, earrings, any face piercing, it comes off. For the ladies in the room, I'm sorry, but if you have this, you're not allowed to put a band-aid over it. You can't put a band-aid over this, 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 this. It doesn't matter. It's got to be taken off. If they say they can't, they can't play. You'll be amazed how quickly they can take out a piercing when they want to play. So if you see tape or bandages, their cat did not attack them. I promise you, if they got one here, 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 and here, cat didn't go crazy. So go tell them you need to take, you need to take the piercings out. If you don't want to handle it, tell my supervisors. They've done this long enough. Here's what a score sheet looks like. You can pretty much ignore it because we're going to be using an iPad. So we've now gone digital. This will still be out there. This is how they'll sign in. Everything else is done via iPad. You may or may not keep score occasionally. So if you see this, you need to make sure that you know what it is. We'll show you the iPad come Monday next week as well as the following Monday. You'll, you'll learn how to do it. Talked about that. The ball will provide the game balls unless both teams agree on using a different one. We have nice Evo balls out there. Um, they're brand, or no, they're Nike. They're brand spanking new. Both men's and women's. Women's uses a 28.5. Men's use a 29.5. There's a difference. Make sure you don't screw that up. You'll, t you'll tell when they're shooting. Men, they're going to shoot that thing way across the thing if you're using a women's ball. The women, probably going to be a little short. So just make sure you have the same thing. A rule change we had from last year. No dunking before, during, or after the game. If you did that, you were automatically ejected. No questions. You go up and touch the rim. See you later. Talk some sense into my boss and said, it's just like an unsportsmanlike, why don't we just let them not count the basket and they get a technical. That's what we change it to. So they go up and dunk. That means they go up, they grasp the rim, pull down, and you hear the ricochet, you hear the recoil on it. That's a technical. Technical, the, bu the bucket doesn't count, and then we go and shoot two free throws and the other team gets the ball. So, if it's deemed unsportsmanlike, so I go toss it off the backboard to myself, climb up the step ladder, and then dunk it, I'm out. <coughs> but if they go up and they just happen to grab the rim and throw it down, it's a technical. I don't want anybody ejected for this kind of thing. I hate meeting with people. Yeah, I went up and touched the rim. You touch the rim, that's no problem. They go up and they go like that, don't worry about it. They go up and grab that rim at halftime, pull down and let that thing go, technical foul. That's it. They go up and do three chin-ups and then let go, see you later. That's unsportsmanlike. What you'll see is you'll see somebody go up and touch the rim or somebody grab the rim. If it's at halftime and they don't snap that rim, just tell them to get off the rim. I don't like meeting with those people. It's a short guy like me trying to go up and touch the rim. Don't leave him go. So, just remember that. 
Our supervisor will help you out. We play five on five. You can begin with four. That's our rules. You can start with four. By according to basketball rules, if we start fouling people out, we can play all the way down to one. Play five on one. As long as they have a chance to win. I've seen as little as three. You won't see much less than that. So just remember that. If it's 85 to 12 and they're down to four or three, game's over. They can't win. So just remember that. All substitutions must report to the scores table. Meaning outside in front of the scores table. We'll show you when we go down there. You bring them onto the floor. They just don't run onto the floor. You bring them on. So we have a dead ball. Ball goes out of bounds. We have a foul. Whatever it is. Ball goes out of bounds. Your hand comes up. Bring subs in. If you have a foul, you report the foul. Then bring the subs in. It's important. This isn't indoor soccer. This isn't hockey. We don't have line changes. They have to come through you. It controls the flow. And don't miss the subs, for God's sakes, please don't miss subs. Ball goes out of bounds, you're like, here we go, spot, and away we go. And they have a sub coming in, don't miss that sub. Um, if you have multiple free throws, they come in before the last free throw is to be shot. So in the case of one and one, they come in on the first one, because you could possibly only have one free throw. If they come in on a two or three shot foul, they come in before the very last shot. Basically, it saves you time from bringing in a sub, shooting a foul shot, bringing in another sub, shooting a foul shot, and away we go. If they're at the table during that last shot, and it goes in, they're like, for the shooter, that bucket goes in, they bring them in for the shooter. Just remember that. We play two 20-minute halves with a three-minute half time. And that clock runs the entire time until the last one minute unless we have a timeout or an official's timeout. So we run that thing nonstop. We are not playing college rules, so if a bucket is made under a minute, we do not stop the clock. My staff knows this, or they should know it, and they should not be doing that. If you see it, tell them to roll the clock. If you're keeping score, roll the clock. The quicker you, the game goes by, the less you have to actually run up and down the floor. So, in the second half, when all whistles, you blow your whistle, clock stops. You chop the clock to start it, it starts. It's as simple as that. Basically, if you played high school basketball or watched high school basketball, that's exactly how we're playing in the last minute. Mercy rule is 40 with 5 minutes to go, 20 with 2. So if they're up 21 with 2, point, two, two minutes to go, the game's over. They're up 39 with 3 minutes to go, hope for that last bucket, and the game's over. If they're... If at any point it hits that, you gotta, you got to stop. You can't be like, well, it's two minutes. They, if they have two foul shots, they can go shoot the two foul shots. But at that point, it'll be over if they don't make them. So, huh? We're doing it in UNCW instead of the state of North Carolina. State of North Carolina. Yeah, it's different high school. You'll have three timeouts, 30 seconds in length. So they want a timeout, but there you go. You get three total. Not three in the first half, three in the second. It's three total. And they're marked on the bottom of the score sheet. Um, the, you can call timeout if your team's in possession. The ball's dead, meaning we made a shot. We want a timeout. Or if the ball goes out of bounds, anybody can call timeout. But if it's in the, during the course of play, you have to have the ball. Not the ball gets tipped in the backcourt, we're running after it, and somebody goes timeout. No, you physically have to be possessing the ball in order to call timeout. If the ball goes out of bounds, anybody can call timeout. Overtime procedures. We will play a three-minute overtime period. The clock stops just like regulation in the last one minute. Everything stays the same. I have to stress we throw a jump ball in overtime. You would think, well, that's obvious because it's overtime. We need to throw a jump ball. It wasn't so obvious. We throw a jump ball in overtime. We line them up going the same way, so if my bucket was here in the second half, I face that way. Vice versa. We throw the jump ball and away we go. Each team will get one time out. So even if they had two, they, still, they only get one now. We go into a second overtime, they still get one time out. Use it or lose it. So it's an extension of the second half, so all fouls will carry over. So if I'm shooting the bonus at one on one, We'll shoot the bonus. If I'm in the two-shot foul, we shoot it there. So just remember that. Real quick. Never, yeah. How many timeouts does each team get? Never said. Did I put it up there? 
Three timeouts for the game. Tie again. Right top line. Good? All right, so now we're going to break up into crews. So what this is, is I'm going to hand you out an iPad, and you're going to take a 10 to 15 question, I wouldn't say quiz, but this is the crew you're going to be working with for the rest of the week. I may add people to it, I may subtract people from it. But this is who you're going to work with. When you take the test, you need an 80% in order to, to work for us. Guess what, you get to take it as a crew. At high school level, we take it as a 40 person association. So yeah, there's 40 of us, we read questions and we try to answer them. The association average is like an 88. So I don't trust most of those people. So just remember that. Um, we're, we're allowed to do it, so when we take the test, at the end it's digital, you can talk about things. You will also talk about um, the plays we have. So we're going to number off one through seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two. Six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, seven, one, and one. Alright, so ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, six, and seven. We'll give you an iPad. You want to help me out with this? Floor, you can stop that for a second. Does every group just get one? What? Every group just gets one? Yeah. <coughs> Alright, so you'll stay in your groups as we go over this. Uh, basically, we'll go over almost everything you did. We'll, we'll I'll ask you to define this, and then we'll talk about uh, different plays that we have on video so you can actually see it. Um, so, violation. When you call violation, so that first sheet you filled out, the first thing you do is you put your hand up, blow your whistle. What does this tell somebody? Violation. And to stop the clock if we're under that one minute. So this is violation. So you give this, you give the signal, you point the direction. And then you tell your partner where the spot's going to be. Those are all important things. A lot of people, they're just like, whoop, travel. It tells me nothing. It doesn't tell me where the ball's going to be put back in play. Why is putting the ball back in play that spot important? You could put them either underneath the bucket where they can just have a nice little easy layup, or you can put them away from the bucket, which is a little more difficult. So that's important, and we'll talk about where you do that tomorrow. Um, so here's everything you had. Wonderful. All right. Give me the definition that you guys had for travel. Uh, taking more than two steps. Taking more than two steps. Taking more than two steps. Without dribbling. What else? Anything else? There's something else. Like self pass, like losing the ball and then going back and getting it. Whatever. Can't pass it yourself. Hitting the ground. Can you shoot it, air ball it, and get your air ball? You absolutely can. If you try to shoot the ball and you suck that badly, you can go retrieve your air ball. I'm not going to penalize you for being that bad. Now I will not penalize you. If, no, they will not. Ask Mr. Ingram in the back of the room back there. Brandon, do they penalize you for air balling and sucking? No. <laughs> yeah, it would be a really long game. So no, you, you, can, you can shoot the ball, but you just can't pass it yourself. What else? Come on, your turners. What are some of the more in-depth? Putting the ground. Pivot. Pivot. What? Changing your pivot. Changing your pivot foot. Picking your pivot foot up before you dribble the ball. So if I'm pivoting with my left foot on the ground, I take this step, pick this foot up, and then put the ball to the floor. That's your quick pump fake and then go. That's a travel. You've got to put the ball to the, the floor before... You put before you take that pivot foot up. So like you said, more than two steps, so I carry the ball and I'm running, that's travel. Change my pivot, or if I pick that pivot foot up before I start my dribble, and we'll show a couple. Do you have something to add? If you do a jump stop, you gotta come down, and you gotta go like this, right there. If you go, that's a travel. It is not called in college or NBA ranks, or in most boys basketball games. If you do a spin move, you can spin, but you can't put this foot back down. So just remember that. It's tough to see. And we'll see a lot more of those. All right. So the first one we have up here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you go, ooh. Guess what? We didn't call that ooh. So you see that. Boop, travel. Point the direction. One, two, three. There you go. And then tell them where you're going to put it in play. That happened in the UNCW in your real sports game. It happens. What do, I, what do I tell my returners? What do I tell you if you miss that travel? What? Get it next time. You're going to miss travels all day long. 
I'll show you travels I miss all day long. It happens. There's times I'll rewind video three or four times. Like, did it really travel? Yes. It happens. So if you miss it, catalog it, get the next one. All right. So this is from one of my games a couple nights ago or before Christmas. See it? It'll be right here. It'll replay again. Hopefully. It should replay. No, I was not on that call. That is Todd. It'll happen right here. You see that? He caught it. Jumped. To travel. I don't know why that's a thing this year and last year, but people are like, catch, reset. Just catch it and get set. You don't need to reset yourself. It happens. You'll see that a lot, especially with freshmen and sophomores coming out that have done that in high school and got away with it. Travel all day long. You, we, it's, it's quick at the beginning. Many to bring up the load. Nope. Oh my God. Right here. See a little hop? It's not much, but it's a travel. We'll get more travels. I'll show them more when we say you make the call. They'll pump fake, take a step, put a dribble. Or they'll blow by their defender. It's so quick you don't see it. So we just got to catalog that play. All right. Five seconds closely guarded. This group right here. What? Uh, must, what's five seconds closely guarded? Within arm length. How much is arm length? Give me a distance. I don't know. Like here. Maybe. Here. Where, who's my tallest person in here? You think their arms are longer than ours? Probably. We don't have long arms. Done. Uh -huh. Nah. See, your arms are different than mine. Yeah. So we can't do arms like right? No. Give me. Give me a distance. Three feet. Four feet. Five feet. Six feet. Seven feet. Eight feet. Three. Ten. Two, three. 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 So I had to be right here. That's close. Six feet. Word. This plus four inches. This plus four inches. Six feet. Or if you're on the basketball court, it's the restraining circle, the half circle. That's six feet. What other else, Quarry Carry, do I need to meet this? What's the legal guarding position? Both feet on the floor. Both feet on the floor and. Facing the player. I don't have to maintain facing the player, but I have to start this way. I can't be like, all right, 1,001, 1,002. I can't do that. i got to face the player. So, we we'll start with both, feet on one, with both feet on the ground, facing the ball, maintain that six-foot distance. If that six-foot's broken, the count stops. So that's where we got to maintain this the entire, the entire time. Ways the count can end. I'm looking at your group. Huh? I gave you one of them. All right. Or? You pass the ball? Or, yeah. or, there's like three of them. Um, shoot. Shoot. And th what's another one? Jumps in the air. Grab the basket. Mm, I'm not going to say jump. What? Dribble. Dribble. Start to stop a dribble. What's the last one? Dribble. Get head and shoulders passed. So, there you go. That's five seconds. Here's one. If you'll see, I forget who's got the count here. I think he does. He should probably have 1,001, 1,002. 1,003. He's now on two when I was on three. Why he just didn't dribble the ball, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he was there for like eight seconds. That's a long time to be holding the ball. So, whenever you have a count, whenever you're that closely guarded, it doesn't happen all that often in, in recreational sports, but if you have it, get it out here. 1,001, 1,002. They break the count, start with the other hand. 1,001, 1,002. They go ahead and shoulders by, no big deal. Five seconds. All right, backcourt violation. Group number three. Man, you're going to trip me up over here. What constitutes front court, back court? Like you already dribbled the ball across half court. Okay, so if I'm across half court, yeah. what has to be across half court to be in front court? The ball. And? Two and two feet. So if any one of those three things is touching the line, I'm still in the back court. So I still have my 10 second count, right? So if I'm dribbling, the, the, pretend this is the back court, and I'm dribbling that ball in the back court, I'm still in the back court. I can retreat. <laughs> If I have one foot on that line and I receive a pass from the backcourt, I'm still in the backcourt. If I'm, everything's completely beyond and then I touch it, it's over and back. Right? All right. So that's basically what we have right there. Uh, if in the front court and then the player while in contact with the ball, it's blah, 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 blah. All right. So here's one. Got that count. He's still in there. Now he's in the front court. Over and back. He gets across just barely. Had that ball still been bouncing on that line, my partner still would have been counting. But as soon as he gets right there, he's in the front court. You can argue about the foul. I don't think he got fouled. That's just that's poor play, play by this guy. 
So, backcourt violation. Here's another one from UNCW. Whee! Do you see the foot right here? I think we I think we called it travel, and this is what it was listed as. But she she puts her foot down on that. It's a backcourt violation. Kick. Who's group number four? Define a kick for me. I'm gonna let you be quiet for a little bit. You've been through this. Uh, defensive player hits the ball with his foot in any way. Below the waist. Below the waist. Intentionally contacts the foot. You said defense. Does it have to be the defense? Yes, I believe so. Could be wrong. Mr. Johnson. Yes. No. No. Anybody can do it. So if I'm sitting here and I'm just like, oh, well, I'm going to pick it up and I'm the offense player. Why? I don't know. You better not pick it up. But if you're soccer, it's a kick. The offense or defense can take, kick it. Rarely do you ever see an offensive kick called. Because it has to be intentional, right? It has to be intentional. So if I'm running up the floor and you go to pass and it hits my foot and shoots back out or shoots out that way and I'm just running and I don't, like, stab at it, it's not a kick. You just got to be intentional. So it's anything below the way. So if you go to throw a pass and I go like that and it hits right here, it's not intentional. So just remember that. So not intentional, anything, blah, blah, blah. Here's a couple. Um... I think we get one, yeah, that one right there. So as that ball comes back across that court, he just sticks his foot out and gets kicked. I get one more, I get one more time off the floor. 67 to 40. It's quite the game we have going on here in the fifth quarter. So there was a kick. <laughs> That's great defense. Not nah, he kicked the ball right here. You see him stab at the ball, right? Here, that's a kick. He even thought it was a kick, and he's like, "Hey, I kicked the ball. Oh, we're gonna go off the floor. Hey, we're gonna go." Just a couple years ago, before they knew what a kick was. That's all right. So look at that call. If the players stop, it's probably a telltale sign something happened. All right, uh, this group over here, group five, carrying a palming. Carrying the ball is when you're like um, you're dribbling, so-called dribbling. Like me, players do get away with this. I don't know how, but they dribble the ball, palm in the hand. Down. How far? What is this palm? Palm, 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 palm. Where's that? Right here? Yeah. What about here? Yep. It's going to be your judgment when we get to right about here. If you think they can hang on to the ball, <coughs> if I put the ball in my hand right here, it's probably not going to fall out. Right about there, it's not going to fall. Or it's, it's not going to fall. It's going to fall out there, not there. So if you ever think that ball comes to rest, and usually you'll see them go back like this, and the defender will go like this, and then they'll blow by him. That's palming your carrying. So if it can come to rest in your hand, that's going to be a carry. No, it is not. If the ball if the ball is up here, I can dribble as high as I want. So if the ball is here, as long as my hand's on top of it and I don't let it rest, it doesn't matter. See, so it doesn't matter where that ball is. So if I dribble and I'm like, D -d 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 -d, and it doesn't come to rest in my hand, it's not a carry. So just remember that. You can dribble as high as you want. So right here, I've got two in the same game. This guy goes, whoop. Partner sees it. It's in his primary. He comes to rest right here. The, the defender goes out, and then he goes underneath. So it's a good carry. Uh, this kid was doing it all night long. You'll see in the next clip that I have. So he goes, gets ready right there. You can see the back of his hand was right about here. What's that? I'll do, do, do that when they drop the basket. Yeah. This is another one we talked about. You're going to miss this one. It's not going to be, hey, there's a carry. It's going to be like, oh, crap, what happened? And then you replay it and be like, yeah, I missed it. Get it the next time. Because this play right here was before this play, that one you just saw. So you'll see right there. Same kid, same kind of play. So he comes out here. He's dribbling. He's like... All right, I'm going to line you up here. And here we go. Right here. Yeah. Those? Probably not. I look advantage versus disadvantage. If he's just kind of like dribbling like this, yeah, leave that go. He goes like this and the defender hitches and he blows by him like he tried to do here. Yeah, we, we'll call that. So I, I really don't call this one, but I call the one where he goes back and then makes his move because it doesn't impact the play. 
All right. Lane violations back here in this group. Delayed uh, immediate violation for a free throw. What has to happen? The shooting team has to go in first. What about a delay? The, de the defense goes in. So shooters there, dribbles, dribbles, stops. Offensive or shooting team goes in. Ball's dead. Shooter crosses the line. It's dead. So the shooter and everybody behind have to wait for it to hit the rim or backboard. Um, the, the team behind will have the same immediate and dead violation if the offense or the shooting team goes in on that shot before it hits the rim, it's, it's immediate. If they're in a marked lane space, it's, delay, or it's immediate for offense and delayed for defense. For the shooter, it, it can hit the rim or the backboard? But it has to hit the rim to be legal. Okay, that's right. So if it hits, to, they, again, we don't penalize them for sucking, it hits top corner of the backboard and goes up and then comes back down and hits the rim. Right. It's a, I'm it's thinking more like late game, somebody trying to throw it off the backboard. Yeah, they have to wait for it to, to hit. Okay. Pretty much if they, they go like this and they start throwing and running, it's dead. So, delayed to medium. We'll show right here. Whee! She made the bucket, but she went running in after it. Still no good. So they, wa they ended up waving it off. Um, this is not a good free throw by her. So she's like, it's going to be short. And it goes in. We wave that one off immediately. If the defense goes in before the offensive player, we, only, we penalize the defense. So if the defense jumps in, I hold my arm out like this, signaling we have a delay. We go like this, ball goes in, I drop it. Because we're not going to let them shoot again. If it misses, I tell the player who, who, who violated. 32 white went in early. And just let them know. I don't think we have another one. All right, basket interference. This is one a lot of people will get wrong. I hope you don't. All right, what do we have first? Basket interference. Who can who can have basket interference? Or there's only one other team out there. The defense. So anybody can have basket interference. What classifies basket interference? You made this call. You're on video making this call. You know what call I'm talking about. It is Where was the ball when you made the call? In the rim. It was in the rim, right? It's in that cylinder. So if it's in the net or in the cylinder or anywhere above that cylinder, that imaginary cylinder, that's basket interference. So then what's goaltending? Everything else? No. What's goaltending? The ball's coming on the downward flight above the rim with a chance to go in. Who can goaltend? What? <laughs> well, anybody can goaltend. But what's team? Offense or defense? <laughs> offense or defense? Defense is the only one that can goaltend. Why? Because the offense player can grab that above the rim as well as it's outside the cylinder and go slam it home without touching the rim in our game. So, goaltending is only on the defense. Basket interference is on either team when the ball's in the cylinder. You won't ever see much of these. And I say that and I'll show you one that happened here because it was in the rim. If you look at it here, ball's in the rim and he flips it out. He goes underneath the rim and it's tough to see. He goes out and he flips it out of the bucket. It was on the cylinder. He flipped it out. That's absolutely goaltending. Or uh, basket interference. So, the question always comes up, what if you go up and slap the backboard? Is that a, what is that? So if I'm going for if I'm going for a block and I just stink that badly, and I go to swat at the ball, ball hits the backboard, I miss, I slap the backboard, and it pops that ball off. We got nothing, right? As long as there's effort on it. Now, if you get to lay it up on this side of the rim, and I come up, I'm so mad I just slap this part of the backboard. What is that? What is that? What is that? Technical foul. You cannot have basket interference or goaltending on a slap. It stinks that way, but they're going to get a technical foul, and we're going to shoot free throws. I say that, and in my game here, I'm going to lead. Kid slaps the backboard. My partner scores it. Now, I'm not looking to see where the flight of the ball was. 
I am looking for a foul on this point. I'm watching these two. So I'm not even looking to see if there's basket interference or goaltending. That's my partner. 100% that's my partner. And I thought it was touched when he, said, when he caught it. I thought, in my mind, the ball was touched while it was coming down. Because I thought, hey, the kid can get up. Maybe that's what he called. I thought, downward flight. So this is just a slap on the backboard that my partner deemed caused the ball to come off. <coughs> we talked about it. And he goes, I, I gave him, I gave him, I counted the basket because he slapped the backboard. This is a varsity game, the high school level. And my partner and I got together, or all three of us, and we're like, no, we cannot do that. This was well after we'd made the call. So <laughs> keep that in mind. You can go up and slap backboard. That backboard's going to move. But just remember that this is not goaltending or basket interference. It's just a poorly executed defensive play that happened to work out for him. All right, other violations that we have up here. Uh, double dribble, meaning dribbling the ball more than once. Um, uh, Backcourt 10 seconds, meaning you have to get the ball across midcourt in that 10 second a lot of time. And if you don't, it's a 10 second backcourt. I don't think you'll ever see that. If you do, give me a call that night. I'll, I'll talk to you about it. And five seconds out of bounds. So you have five seconds to release the ball. Remember, remember for 10 second backcourt count, it has to be in the front court for the count to stop. So if that ball is in the air and you're at eight, nine, it starts traveling over midcourt, you get to 10, and then 11, and then Ryan catches it, that's a 10 second count because the ball has not touched anything in the front court. And now if it bounces in the front court, we're done. Ball's in the front court. Until it touches somebody or something in the front court, it's still in the back court. And out of bounds, you just have to release it. We'll show a couple here. So, this is going to be a double dribble. Watch this kid right here. As he dribbles up the floor, dribbles up the floor. He's like, all right, I'll pass it. It'll come back to him. He's like, all right, we'll give it up. It'll come back to him. It's a long play. He's like, ah, shoot. So watch it again. I'll, I'll rewind it back here. He gets it, dribbles, puts it together, puts it back to the floor. So he dribbled twice. Got here, picked it up, put it back down to the floor real quick. So if, if it happens to come together at any point, even if they put it on their hip, they pin it against their hip, and then push it back down, the ball has stopped. They've picked up their dribble. You will see that occasionally. Um, five seconds out of bounds. Watch this count. I think it's quick. I don't think he got through his five seconds. I think it's a five. I think it's actually five seconds. But give them a, a little bit of time. When you do your count, thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. That's how I count. Figure out a way that'll let you count that way. You finish five one thousand. Bam, there's my five seconds. So, I timed it, it's, it's actually five seconds. I usually give them a hair a little, a little bit longer. So just remember that on this. Other violations, when I say spot violation, what do I mean by spot violation? What can I do, if, if I give you a spot, what can you do in that spot? No. Not really. What? How far is one step though? You've got a three foot area that you've got to stay in, so roughly this big. I've got to keep a, a body part over. So if I go out and I go to throw it, as long as my foot or arm are over this imaginary spot, I'm good. But if I leave that spot, that's a spot violation. Can I dribble the ball? Yes. I can do anything out of bounds. I can sit there if I want to chop. I can sit there and chop for five seconds. I want to back up, so my imaginary thing is three foot from the line all the way to the wall. So if I want to throw that deep pass and I want to back up and I want to give the old hee-ho, I can do that. I just can't go side to side. So just don't just remember that. That if they back up, they're fine. If they run side to side, then it's a spot violation. Uh, held held or jump balls is simultaneous possession. Um, sorry for the ladies, it happens more in a women's game or a code rack game than it does in a, a men's game. But it will happen. If I go for a shot, will you stand up for one second? Yes, sir. If I go for a shot and I, we both jump, he puts his hand on top of the ball and forces me back down and I land. That travel? What is it? Why? Both had possession. Both had possession, right? So
So if I go up and then he goes to block it and it falls through and I land, then we got nothing because we never had joint possession. But if they go up and they they stick it right here and push it back down, then we're gonna have we're gonna have a jump ball. Thank you. Uh, chest is swinging the elbows. I'm not gonna worry about. It. Somebody comes in and they just start violently throwing their elbows when somebody's near. You won't see it if you do. Again, give me a call. I'll wake up for it. All right. So now we're on to fouls. We're about mm, hopefully 45 minutes, less than 45 minutes, getting you guys out of here. Fouls. When I have a foul, I blow I blow the whistle and put my hand up. This signifies foul right here. What else do I need to do? What I do? What I do for a violation? I tell my partners what I have. You don't have if you have a block or a charge, you might want to come out with that. But a simple hand check, maybe not. Call foul. Spot out of bounds here. If they're not sure, you just like blow your whistle and they're like boop, and everybody's looking at you. Give them what you have and tell them where you're going. Again, communicate with partners. I had a foul, the hand check, the spot's going to be there, going that way. White ball, right there. That's what I tell my partners if I'm working with them, if it's not obvious. If you have a charge, or an Ill or charge illegal screen, block, usually you come out with a block this way, illegal screen's this, and then this, uh, and a charge is this. And we'll, we'll show a couple of those. So you always want to put your hand up for a, for a foul. Because if I do this, and Drew comes out like this, what does that mean? What? Well, it means stop the clock, but what does he have if he has this? He's got a violation, and I've got a foul. And now we need to talk. Because a, f a foul could lead to a violation, or a violation could lead to a foul. You could, ha you could travel into a charge. You could charge into a travel. So just remember that. If, if you have one, he has the other, go talk to each other. Hey, what do you have? And then talk about it. Uh, fouls, we talk about rhythm, speed, bounce, and quickness. If one of those is disrupted, then we have a foul. So if I'm trying to motor along at you know, 20 miles an hour and somebody pulls on me, that's my speed. I, that's why I said I'm in my car when you try to do that. Um, or if I try to make a move and I could get around you and you disrupt my quickness, that's a foul. Your bounce and rhythm is if you're going up for a shot and you get knocked off enough that your shot doesn't go in, we're going to call that. So that's your rhythm and your bounce. Freedom of movement, you have two hands on a ball handler or on a player, it's a foul. We're not allowed to do that. Post play, uh, you stand up one second for me? You might face this way. So in the post, I'm allowed to have one point of contact if he doesn't have the ball. Once he gets the ball, I've got to play straight up. If I have this foot lodged between him and I start forcing him out, that's a foul on me. Conversely, he can't wrap myself and try to prevent me from trying to get either side. So here's this feeler arm in the post. I'm good here. He gets the ball, and now I've got to play straight up defense. If I have this arm, I can't extend, just like he can't try to like back into me. So if we have this, we play defense. We have this, we're going to have a foul. He holds, we're going to have an offensive foul. Thank you. So those are just a couple things to watch for when officiating that play. Again, there's a rundown of everything that we have. Hit. Back up here. Illegal use of the hands. What's a hit? Can you don't make a basketball play on the ball? Like our professor said, somebody here a couple years ago, hit the ball with their fist. Different call. Different call? Hit, hit's a foul. What, what do you guys have? Huh? With your hand. Uh, over that one. That's a hit. Pretty simple. The Ill illegal use of the hand. You go up and I swat at you and I miss and I hit your arm. That's what it is. Simplest terms. So there, we have the swing down. He goes like that. Don't always get in your mind that if somebody swings down like that, it's going to be a foul. More than likely it is. But not all the time it is. They may swing and miss, or they may contact the ball and we go the other way. So on here, we do a good job. He goes down, he swings down, hits across the arm. That's a hit. You can do it this way, you can do it this way, I don't care. But when you do the mechanics portion of it, just be consistent when you do it. So that's a good hit call. We have another one that's going to happen, I believe, up in this top corner right here. You see him come up, hit across. Hopefully the replay real quick. So up here. 
contact, he comes up, leaves his vertical plane, and goes out. Now, what if we stand up one more time? He face me. He's playing defense. Hands are straight up. And I go to shoot the ball and I go into his arm. Is this legal? Why? I have the right to that space. You have the right to that space. Now, if I if I go and I'm here, put your arms forward. Stay right there. And I go up and I hit his arm. Is this a foul? Why? Because now he's he's out of his vertical plane. So you give that defender the vertical plane. If they come up and they're here, like he is, and I go into this, what did he do wrong? Nothing. You can't penalize him for it. Just like if you want to call it um, a block foul or if you put your hands up. And if I punch you in the gut, what's your natural reaction? Good, you're you're going to come up right. So put your hands back up. If I hit him right here, right in the gut, he's obviously going to come down, right? So now, don't call it on him. What did he do wrong? I punch you in the gut, you're also going to go like this. So if I'm coming in as an offensive player, I'm always going to hit you here. You either have an O call or you have a charge because you did nothing wrong. Thank you. So just remember that. Look at the defense. Always referee the defense that if the offense initiates that contact and that defensive player goes like this, it's going to be on the offensive player or a no call. <clears throat> Here's another one that happens real quick right there. Poor big guy. Just He didn't have a chance. He reaches outside his vertical plane and hits him in the arm. So they hate when little guys like me come in there. Because they don't stand a chance. Beep. Hits the arm. I'd like to see that come from right here versus this one. We got the call, but right here is where the call should have come from. So just remember that um, if you see a hit, call it. More than likely, you'll hear it as well. So if you hear the slap, there it is. Right there. It's a hit. All right, hand check. Group number two, what's a hand check? Somebody's dribbling and you or just I All right, I'm dribbling, I'm dribbling, I got you. So if I'm trying to go here and you're you're basically forcing me in a different way, right? Yeah. So you talked about all right, one hand. Can you can you have that feeler hand or is it how do you You're not you're not supposed to be able to touch them. Yeah, right. so you can do you can do one hand, get that feeler hand, and then you gotta play defense. Yeah. So but if you if you repeatedly come and just keep touching or guiding with this arm or put two hands on, it's a hand check. So like you said, one hand off, we're fine. One hand and writing, not so fine. What you'll start to see is people put the back of their hand like this and guide them out with the back of their hand. Kids are getting smarter. Well, so are officials. So this is really where the disrupts the rhythm, speed, bounce, and quickness. So if I want to go from point A to point B and I get rerouted to C, that's probably a hand check. If they disrupt where I want to go and he doesn't beat me to the spot, it's going to be a foul on him. So we'll have a couple here. Watch this kid right here. You see the back of that hand as he's trying to... He's trying to go from here to the block and he gets to here. So he wasn't wanted to here, but he got there. So it's a good hand check call. Back of that hand basically doesn't allow him to go where he wants to. Defender gets beat and has to reroute him. Watch it one more time. <coughs> Back of that arm, just kind of riding him. There you go. I don't know if you made the call or not. So now we're coming up. This is the one Zach Gilbert wants us to get every day of the week. They try to split a defender. He comes through and he swats across. He goes like this, tries to poke at the ball. Obviously, unless I get that clean as clean can be, which rarely happens, we're going to call that every day of the week because, stand up for me. As he goes by and he pokes right here and he's going this way, so go this way, I'm reaching across him. That's obviously going to be a foul. Nine times out of ten, you call that foul, I'm going to be happy. One time, I'm going to be like, ooh, we probably shouldn't call it, but that's rare. So just remember that. Two points of contact as he comes and curls around here on the top. Right there. Tries to get by him, defense is like no. Two points of contact. You gotta be you gotta make sure you see that. I didn't obviously because I didn't call it, but my partner did. Two points of contact. 
a body file. Did we get? Was this on there? Body file. It's one way. Yeah. What's that? What else? That's one example. Get a hip. If they're driving and I just kind of ride them out with my body, it's a block or a body foul. So if somebody's going up for a layup, and you'll see this, and they get turned and their hands are straight up, I was straight up, I was straight up. Yeah, but you went from here to there and rode them out. Of course you were straight up, but it's still an illegal act. So using any part of your body to, to displace. So if you ever see this, I typically with body foul because you can't call a hit. It's not a hold, it's not a block, so I call body. So here's one. Watch this kid ride that kid. So, so as you see, this kid comes and stops right about the block. But where, look where the kid on the backside, right here, look where he rides him to. Just keeps pushing. Just keeps pushing. Hey, my hands are up, my hands are up, my hands are up as I'm pushing him along. That's a body foul. That's a push. You can call push, you can call body. But he, he rode him out with his hips. So we've got to make that call because that's, in, that's illegal contact. So one more time, just pushing him. Yes, you will get my commentary every once in a while if you ever get put on video. That's me right there. I'm on the microphone like I am tonight. And you'll get these videos and you get to listen to what we have to say. All right, so here's another one. Watch what he does. I think this is a pretty good call. He goes, his hands are up. As he goes up, when a, when a player goes up, they're pretty much defenseless like you would be in football. It's a lot easier when, you, when you're running at a high rate of speed or when you jump that your balance can get knocked off easily. So as that kid goes up, he's going like this away from the bucket and trying to lay it in. So just remember that, that when that happens, we can have that and one. If he, if he puts that in and we're good to go, he puts that in, we may pass on it, but I like the call. Watch his torso and how it's turned when he, when he goes around this screen. You can see the kid kind of bumps him, and the kid goes like this to shoot. So as he's going around him, you can see that his balance is thrown off, and then he turns. So you can see the kid was here, but he got turned. So this is going to be a, a body or a push foul. All right, block. We're getting to the block charge section. This is going to be fun. When a defender steps in front of that offensive path you were talking about and like not being into the spot. Okay. So basically when we we're trying to take a charge and I don't get set in front of the offensive player. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, that's pretty good. But uh, defender must start with both feet on the ground, move laterally or obliquely with an offense player, not moving towards the offense player. Can I give ground and still and still be able to not have a block? So basically take a charge? Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. So here's a block. Whee! <laughs> that's, that's pretty textbook right there. He's like, nope. Sorry. You'll see that a lot out there, unfortunately. Boop, block. So that's a pretty textbook block. If you can get that, you're, you're well on your way. One of the tips I have when you call a block or a charge, so what we had here was the defender, he was what I would call set, but the offensive tra player tried to slip him and he goes like this and leans into him. So if you're going to have a charge, most of the time they're going to land on top of each other or be in the same direction. So if I have a charge and I put my shoulder into him, he's going to go that way and I'm going to follow him. If we have a block, 
I'm going to hit him, and he's going to go one way, and I'm going to go the other. So we're going to, we're going to come apart. So if we have a charge, they're pretty much going to take it, and they're going to either land on top of each other or go in the same direction. Most of the time. If you have a block, they're going to fall apart. So if you ever have that crash in the middle of the lane, you're like, I'm not sure what it was. Look where the players are. Boop. Fall apart. Block. They fall together. Bam. Charge. Most of the time. If, as an offensive player on a charge, if I lower my shoulder into him, so I go to and through him, then it's on me. I can't clear him out. I can't throw him off like that. So if I initiate the contact, and I'm just like, I'm going to the bucket, and I just put my shoulder into him, it's a charge every day of the week. So just remember that, that if they land together, probably a charge. If they land apart, it's probably a block. So here's another block. Have a good one. So this is the one. Kind of, it could be a body foul too, but he he just kind of kept going with him and rode him out with the, with the body. So block or a body foul right there. He so he the offensive player pretty much beats him and he just doesn't get to it. All right, so charge. Finish out my definition of a charge. What do you have to have for a charge? If you just said you get ran over. Run over is part of it. The if if player lowers said. the shoulder and uses his elbow to push off completely. What if, what if I'm giving ground? What if I'm like this? I can still get the charge, right? Because why? What? I'm giving ground, so stand up. So if you're coming at me and I'm like, all right, I'm playing defense, I'm playing defense, I'm just slowly, slow running backwards, and you just happen to run into me quicker than what I can retreat, that's on you. That's going to be on you. Because I'm allowed to give ground. If they try to go around me and I can shuffle and still beat them to the spot, it could be a charge. So you don't necessarily have to be set, but it's a, one, it could be one of the criteria. So if I step up late and I don't get here by the time you take off, bless you. I don't get here by the time you take off, it's a block. But if you get ready and I sit here and then you go into me, it's going to be on you. So remember, that's always, do I get there late? If, yeah, if, the, if the answer to that is yes, it's a block. If I beat you to the spot and you run me over, it's going to be a charge. So, uh, pushing off of the, of the forearm, so we stand up for a second. So if I'm, if, if I'm dribbling, dribbling, and I'm trying to get by him, and I just throw this arm out, that's an offensive foul. Maybe not a charge, but it's player control. So I'd, I'd put my arm out and throw the defender off. I think we have one of those here. I think this might be the play. Do we not call it? Yeah. Okay. I think it happens. This guy right here. Whoop. You see that elbow? He's like, space, here we go. Now it's tough because it happens right here and when we talk about primaries tomorrow, I have the best angle, I probably should have gotten it. Because I'm looking through, Brandon's looking through and so is Brian. They're both looking at the player this way. They're seeing this. I saw space between the players. Those guys were looking here. I picked that up, it's a good call. I don't. I have this whole stands mad at me. What? Especially this guy right here. He was a pain in the butt all game. And he, he wasn't even a part of the team. He was just sitting there. Yes, ma'am. Who? Right here? We operate on three-person system. So you have one here, one here, and one here. So, yes, we do, we do three-person here. Makes the game a lot easier than running two-person. So, that should have been my call looking through this way. Here's another one. The kid steps up, he gets set, beats the kid to the spot, and takes contact. This kid was going to the bucket regardless of who was in his way. So just remember that the kid, though he, was, he may have been here, he may have sidestepped this way a little bit, he's there. And he took the contact. This kid lowers his shoulder and says, I'm going to the bucket. The other way, every time. Is 
This is, I believe, the same game. I forget where this one is. I think it happens right. Uh, right here. Maybe a little tough to see. Watch the big guy. Oops. See the big guy? He is set, and it's tough to see when it's big like this. But the big guy puts his shoulder into him and clears him out. So it's a good it's a good charge call. So the defender's there. We may be even, and I go like this. It's a charge. Put my shoulder into him. I, no I knocked him out. Illegal screen. Where am I at on this on this group back here? Yeah. I have two returners and a guy that calls high school basketball. I think you'd know illegal screen. Not being set. Not being set. So what to to have a legal screen, what needs to happen? Will you stand up for me? So I'm go, he's gonna I'm gonna screen him. He's fit your face that way. What has to happen for me to have a legal screen a legal screen on him? He's gotta be able to see me. So can I set the screen here? Yes. Yeah. 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 He, can't do it behind. So we'll start here. If I set this screen here, what what do I have to do? So he, I, he can see me. I'd be inside my body. So if he tries to make a move, I can't elbow, knee, yeah. hip, throw him out like that. I can't do that. I can stay within my frame the entire time. I give myself a solid base. Go like this. He makes contact, and I go to roll. Can I pin him? Nope. I can roll. So it's a screen roll. But if he tries to go, he tries to go low, and I roll, and I I pin him right here and drag him with me. Illegal screen. Turn. All right, back screen. Now what do I need? Time and distance. What does that classify as? A step. So if he makes a turn, he can see me, right? Turn around again. Now if he makes a turn, he can't see me, right? I'm too close. So you've got to give him what I call three feet. If he can make that first step and then hits him, it's going to be on him. If, turn sideways again, he goes to try to go underneath me and I slide in front of him, I was moving. Illegal screen. Thank you. So... Those are some, those are some of the criteria. Time and distance is the big one, and being able to being able to see that screen. A lot of times you'll see like this. They'll be like, eh, and then screen like that. That's illegal. They throw the hip, the elbow, throw the hands out, hold as they come around that screen. It's all legal screens. I think we even have a butt or two in here. Apparently this one didn't pour it over as well as I wanted it to. So, watch right here. He goes to shut, set that screen. He's like, I'm going to hold and then I'm going to stick my butt in you. It's an illegal screen. Because he didn't allow the defender to get around. Watch this guy right here. Watch this big guy. I happened to pick on him two years ago because he was in a lot of our videos. Right here. See the defensive player trying to get around? He's out like this. This is always going to be an illegal screen. They come out and he like can't get by me and they make contact with the arm. Illegal screen. So watch his arm. You know why we missed it? Because this official right here is watching the shot. He stays in his primary. You can see his head go up with the ball. Don't ever watch the ball when you officiate. Toughest thing to ever do. But you watch that, you call that, you go the other way. This one I think happens again and this happens right around here. It'll come back. Right there. We missed it. It's subtle, but apparently this kid liked to use his butt to set screens. He comes and sets this screen. He's like, I got you, bro. Oops, there it is. It's marginal, but does it impact the play? And not really, but it's still an illegal screen. 
You call that early, you get that out of your game, you won't deal with the rest of the, rest of the game. You call that in the first five minutes, that kid keeps his butt inside himself. All right, other types of fouls, we talk about a hold, a push. Those are pretty self-explanatory. I go up and I grab somebody, I hold them. Now, the difference is, at the end of the game, and I want to stop the clock for a foul. Is this an intentional foul? Probably not. I grab him and restrict him, probably an intentional foul, and we'll talk about that. Um, I believe this is a push. Oh, right here. See it again. Watch. Right here. She's, a, she's one of our supervisors. Whoop. See the hip? Foosh. She's like, get out of the way. And tries to put the hip into her. You call that push, she stops doing that. I showed her the video and I told her she needed to knock it off. But you can see the offensive player went like this. Went back. That's illegal. Uh, watch these guys right here. Yes, we have a GoPro. Yes, you will, might wear it sometimes. Watch 14 as he tries to jockey for position. He's got a forearm and that leg. He leverages that leg out. That's a foul. You put air in that whistle, he stops it. You let that go all game, you try to get that at the end of the game, it's tough. <clears throat> so try to get that early. Zach's rule of thumb is call five fouls in the first five minutes. Set the tone of the game. 20 minute half, you call a foul, it takes 35 seconds to report a, report a foul. If you're shooting, it takes almost a minute. You, you do the math. That's almost five minutes off your game just by calling a foul. I'm going to teach you how to, to, how to referee and be lazy at the same time. <laughs> so, you call more fouls when they shoot, the less you've got to run up and down the floor. You don't call more fouls, the more you run up and down the floor. Special types of fouls, intentional fouls, is not playing the ball. So, somebody goes up and I wrap them around the waist. I intentionally shove off the ball trying to stop the clock, meaning I have a hard foul off the ball. Uh, the one I had the other night, girl goes to run, the other girl goes and trips her, just to, just to trip her. I was like, why? But she's out there and she's like this. So I called an intentional foul. They were down two and I was like, that was stupid. And they ended up losing by five. I was like, well, that happens. Um, technical foul. <coughs> Basically, a technical foul is any language, so they drop the F-bomb and the wall shake because they yelled it so loud, they kick the ball, they go up and grab the rim. Technical foul is pretty much anything that's conduct related. You're not going to have a technical foul during the course of play. That'll be either intentional or flagrant. So just remember that. Flagrant is a fight. What's my rule of thumb in a fight? Leave, just deuces, I'm out of here. You guys duke it out, I'll see you guys later. Somebody else who's worked for me, what's my rule of thumb for a fight? Uh, let, us, let them handle it and get a supervisor. Sit back and enjoy the front row seat to the fight. You know why? You get paid eight bucks an hour or one hour's worth of class credit. I don't want you to get punched. I don't want to get punched. You sit back, you let them duke it out. <laughs> you blow your whistle as loud as you can. You try, to, you try to find a buddy on the team, like, you need to go take care of that. I've had two fights in the 11 years I've done this. It's very rare. Most of the time, you can get between them. They start bellying up, be like, don't be stupid. It happens. They get mad, the egos get the best of them. They start throwing, back away. Hopefully our, our sport assistant or supervisor who's in the thing is hitting the horn, hitting the horn, hitting the horn. People are going, what's going on? Hit your whistle. You'll get a Fox 40 whistle. It emits at 140 decibels. It hurts when you blow it in somebody's ear. I blow the whistle right here. He could kick my ass. Without a doubt. I put a whistle in my mouth and I blow it and he's like, ah. It happens. So, don't get close enough to you know, get punched in the face, but get close enough to blow the whistle. And then sit back and take, take notes. Anybody comes off the bench, see you later. Automatic ejection. Somebody else comes in, starts wailing away, see you later. Hopefully, hopefully my sport assistant's videoing the entire thing. Bring that into Friday's training. <laughs> Double fouls. Fouls on each team. Your blarge situations. This is where you're going to have it. I go in, I run my man over, partner calls a block, the other one calls a charge. That's not good. Because if I come out and I go block, and Brandy comes out and he calls charge, guess what? We've got to report both of them. It has to happen. So if we have that case and we have a barred situation, 
and the bucket goes in, we score the bucket, don't shoot any free throws, and give the other team the baseline. If the bucket does not go in, we go to the jump ball because it's a loose ball at that point in time. My word of the wise is don't come out and give a prelim. Look, your partner, you have a double whistle. I'll show a play probably in two nights where he had a triple whistle. I come out and I sold charge. I was working with Brandon in the back. He had his hand up. My other partner was like this in the video. I was like, he was winding up for a charge. If I'd have come out block and my partner would have went like this or Brandon would have went like this, we were screwed. So word to the wise, you hear that other whistle look at each other and be like, I got a charge. Or you say, mm, okay, you know, you charge. <laughs> because you look at it and be like, especially if it comes out of your primary, we'll talk about whose primary it comes out of. Be like, my call, my call, and you come out and, and do it. So just be aware of that. Um, types of fouls and shooting foul situations. So we play high school rules. So you get to seven fouls, you get one on one. Hopefully your table's keeping it on the board. So when you get to six, you're like, hey, that's six. And then you go, ding, next one we're shooting. When you get to seven, find your shooter. You call the foul, I'll go get the shooter. I call the foul, you get my shooter. Because I tell you what, I'll go to the table, foul, shooting one one. I'll look back and be like, I'll, I'll call white 21, hit. Turn around, white 21's on line. I'm going, son of a bitch. <laughs> or, conversely, I'll call the foul, and they're like, who's shooting? You're like, I don't know. I got the file, and then you come and say, I got the shooter. Don't tell me White 21's a shooter. You know why? I'm going to go report White 21. I've got the shooter. And then you take that shooter and you go to line. You get to 10, we shoot two foul shots. Technical, intentional, flagrant. We have two shots in the ball. Intentional foul, we put it back at the point of interruption, meaning where was the ball last at? Technical foul or flagrant technical, we go to midcourt, and we put the ball in play there. So if I call an intentional foul at midcourt, Clear the line, shoot two free throws, go back to midcourt. If it happens right underneath the bucket, put it right underneath the bucket. I tell you to F off, you give me a technical, two shots, and then I, the other team gets the ball at the division line. Doesn't happen very often, but when it does, you need to know where to put the ball in play. Player and team control foul, so illegal screens, holds on offense, charges, player controls, we don't shoot on those. So if if we have team control, meaning my team is in possession of the ball, we haven't shot the ball, we're not going to shoot. If I go up for a shot, I release it, my teammate pushes on the rebound, I don't have team control as soon as I shoot it. So just remember that if it's a rebounding foul, we're going to have shots. If we're out passing across and we have a charge or illegal screen, we don't shoot. That's important because when you come to the end of the game, you call that illegal screen, they're going to want shots. They're not going to get them. So just remember that. Um, calling fouls, see the play start, develop, and finish. We'll, call, we'll have plays in the next couple days where you'll see us make a call and we shouldn't have, or we, ha we had a no call and it was a good no call, or we, had a, we made a call and we, we shouldn't have. So um, when you have a foul, everybody freezes, so you blow your whistle. Because what happens if I call the foul right here and I'm like, boop, and I, I turn and go away? If these two are on the ground and they just had that charge and I'm like, boop, charge, and I'm going running away, and he's pissed at him or he's pissed at him, you either have kicks, punches. If I go, boop, and they're on the ground, they look at me and I go, charge, and I stay right here, they're not going to do anything. And if they do, I know who did it. As soon as I turn my back, I don't know who did it. So if we call the foul, everybody just freeze. And we'll talk about how we rotate tomorrow. All right, reporting a foul. It's color. All right, if it goes in, count the basket. If, it does, if the basket doesn't go, go in, don't worry about it. Color, number, foul, what happens next? Why do we go with color first? So you know what team it is. There's two sides. You got blue and you got white. You say blue, I'll go over here. If you say 34 white, there's two 34s, I go to 34 on blue side first. So, color tells, tells my people what side of the paper to go on. Then the number. Do I say white 2, 3 or 23? Why do I say 23 and not 2, 3? You could have 2, you could have 3, and you could have 23. There's three numbers you could possibly have there. If it's on white 23 and I go white 2, 3, and I'm already down to two, and I'm like, 
Done. 23. So it's a whole number. Um, give the file. Don't make it up. Don't be like, hit. And the dude got, it was a charge. Don't do that. Sometimes you'll go up, you'll call hit, and it was a body. It's all right. But try to give what the file was. Because at some point, you may have to give an explanation to a player. I thought I was clean up top, but yeah, I got him with the body. That's what I called. Do you have something to add? I was going to say, when you're, when you're reporting your number, another reason it's important to say the whole number like 23 instead of 2, 3, is if I'm in the box, you say white 2, 3, you say white 2, and I'm looking for white 2, and then you say 3, I think they're shooting 3 shots. So say, two, say 23, then I know I'm looking for 23, then tell me what's happening next. Yep. So, say the number, and then what happens next? Spot out of bounds, two shots. Everybody on the floor should know what happens before you get to the once you, before you get to the the scores box to report the file. It's not a secret. If you call a charge, you're like whoop, wait, twenty three, we gotta hit. We're gonna shoot two. <laughs> it's not a secret. Wait, twenty three, hit two shots. Projects confidence, especially if it's loud. Like he says, we'll put you in the box. You will hear what you can't hear in there because. You're basically in a glass box with a ceiling and you can't hear crap and there's a hole this big in front of you. That's it. Be loud. Project the confidence. If I go out there on a Friday night or a Tuesday night and I'm like, white 23, got push. Yeah, we'll put it out of bounds. It's not going to go over well with the coaches because if he's arguing with me, you know what I'm going to do? White 23, we've got a hit. Two, and I'll look at him because that projects that I knew what I saw. You've got to have it, that ability. It's going to be tough. That took 11 years to get that far. So don't be like, oh, I can do that the first day. It's not going to happen. But you'll get there. The backboard. In play. The face, the sides, the top. Out of play. Everything else. If I hit the back of the backboard, it's out. Hit the supporting structure, it's out. I can hit the side. It can roll across the top. And it's perfectly legal. We'll talk about traveling later. We'll talk about all this later. All about it later. Sportsmanship, yes, sir. Back to the reporting real fast, sorry. But if the if they score the basket and we're counting the basket, make sure you tell your sports assistant that because I've been in there multiple times where they've made the layup, gotten fouled, and then they just come over and don't tell me score the basket or don't tell me shooting one, shooting two, and then. I know that it should be counted, but I don't know if the crew knows that it should be counted, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that situation. So make sure you tell me, count the baskets so that we're all on the same page moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> Score the bucket. And this. Don't be like, <laughs> Score the bucket. White. 32. Slow it down. Hit. One shot. So everybody knows. All eyes are going to be you when, on you when you do that. Um, sportsmanship. We have a 1 through 5 sportsmanship rating. Yes, you have to grade the teams. Typically, people start at a 4. You're not so nice, you go down to a 3. You're really bad, you go down to a 2. If you got awful and have three people ejected, you're at a 1. If you're really, really perfect little angels, you get a 5. It's hard to come by. Pretty much, small guys out of like, hey, you, were, you got the right call. Away you go. They don't argue at all. That won't happen very often. But if it does, give them a 5. But we typically start at a 4. I just ran down for you. They, they're going to argue. Welcome to a thankless job. They're going to argue a couple calls. They do that, perfect, no, no big deal. They're out there and like, what, are you kidding me? Can't make calls. That's probably a three. You tee somebody up, more than likely a three. You get down to this one right here, two, somebody better be gone. You better, you better have ejected somebody. Or you give him a technical, him a technical, her a technical, and him a technical. And then you got to write it up. If you don't write up why you gave a team a two, they, go, they bump up to a three. So if you're going to give a two, tell your supervisor why. And then they'll write the report. Because then we can defend it. If he was being an a-hole, he was being an a-hole, and so was she, and you gave all three of them technicals, or your crew did, that's, that's defendable. Say why. He argued all night long. I told him to shut up, and she, sl she slammed the ball down. Perfect. I can, I can deal with that. Give me a little detail. Those are fun to read when you actually put some detail into them. Handling conflict. This will transcend any time you ever work anything. Know why they're upset. You'll see I, I have a technical file where I gave a coach a technical file because he come running down the sideline at me. I called Nan1 and then he starts pointing at me during the, during the reporting. You don't point at me when I'm reporting a file. I'll tell you what he said here in just a little bit. But know why they're mad. He wanted a foul call. I watched the video. There's no foul. 
Um, if, they, if they attack your call, it's no big deal. That's horrible. I can't believe you made that call. All right, you don't like my call. That's cool. Let that one roll. You're horrible. That's about me personally. You can't tell me I'm horrible. Whack, there's one. Again, when you give technical, don't go whack. That happened like three years ago. Somebody goes whack, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> technical file. Walk away. Um, they drop a couple magic words. One starting with F, a couple with GD. Those are automatic. If it's whoo, and you can't hear it, hey man. Because sometimes they're mad themselves. But if they're just like, oh my God, then we got a problem, especially if they can hear it everywhere. If the guy in the weight room drops his wage because he thinks the world's ending, we need to go get that one. So, the one I always say is, ball don't lie. Oh God, do I hate this one. High high school kids telling me this. Ball don't lie. Dead tonight. You ever see Shaq shoot free throws? <laughs> it lies. <laughs> if they bait an opponent, they start taunting, clapping in somebody's face. Uh, I, I, I'm horrible at taunting, so don't read the bottom of the slide. But if they start taunting, they get in their face, they come over and they, they flex over. And that's all taunting. See you later. All right, so we have five steps, or at least this is my five-step process to handling conflict. It may not always work, but most times it does. If I'm in here, what's it? Brock, right? Yeah. He drops psh, underneath his breath. He's mad. Or he slams the ball and he catches it. Come on, man, I know you're frustrated. Work with me. He knows I heard him. If he's really mad, he can have the conversation. He and I know what's going on. Best time to do this is during free throws. Because you can go up to him, hey, watch the contact, or watch this, or watch the language, or will you tell your buddy over here to watch his language? Stuff like that. Give him a quiet word. Then it's a public warning. He's really mad. He doesn't, he's giving you the stare down. That's enough. Give him this a little bit. Far enough away, don't be like, bam, that's enough. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you put his hand in somebody's face, he's really going to be mad. You might swing. I do this. He's pretty close. He's going to knock my ass out. So don't let him do that. Hey, that's enough. Let everybody know. Because this tells my partners that this guy right here, we're done. I do this to coaches all the time. Coach, I heard you. We're done. I don't ever say one more word. What if I say one more word, you're out of here? What's going to happen? You're going to say something smart back to me. Word. <laughs> word. <laughs> See you later. Now he's testing me. If he says word back, I mean, i got to dump him. I don't want to dump him. I want him to play. <coughs> captain's meeting. Bring two captains together. If it's really physical and you've told him to shut up, her to shut up, the other team to shut up, that one would be quiet. I'd say don't say shut up. I've heard you. Pipe down. Quiet down. Whatever it is. Find what works for you. Bring the captains together. Be like, all right. Now listen, you handle your team, you handle your team. Because if you don't, you know what I'm going to have to do. Hey, the team's a little ambiguous. You don't know what I'm going to have to do. You know what I'm going to do. You got to do it early. Because what happens when you do this with five minutes left in a game that's a two point ball game? What happens? And this happened to me when I was in grad school. They brought us together and, like, hey, you know, it's getting a little physical out there. You get a little chippy. Will you guys you know, just tone it down a little bit? That ain't going to work three minutes left in the ball game. You got to do it in the first half. <coughs> I've seen it work, I've seen it backfire. If you have to bring them together, bring them together. Sometimes you, can't, you don't get the opportunity. Half time is a good time to talk to them, especially if you want to tell them to quit doing something. Technical foul and then an ejection. Technical foul, you say, you say something, you cross that line that I drew in concrete, you whizzed right on by it, technical foul. Keep going, just head for the door. So, talked about this, don't make threats. You can run through all of this and get straight to an ejection. F you, you're horrible, see you later. We don't need you back for a while. They'll come sit in my office and explain to me why they did that. Always give me detail because I love reading those reports. And then that person comes into my office like, what'd you say? Well, you know, I, was, I really wasn't that bad. I'm like, you dropped four F-bombs, a GD. You told them that you were going to go see them tonight after the game and they were dead to you. Uh, yeah, you didn't say much. No, the, give me the report. All right, so here's some technical files that should have been called. All right, so obviously it's the end of the game. They're just like, yeah, you missed the ball. Yeah. Right in his face. I'm surprised 13 just didn't punch 51. You know what? If 13 would punch 51, I'd just be like, no big deal. 51, you deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. But you've got to you've got to get this guy. That's a technical foul. And if he still wants to keep going, see you later. They're obviously winning because he lets them score. 
That's no big deal. You can let them score all night long. It's, it's not going to affect how I play the game. Uh. <coughs> but he claps in somebody's face like this, and I can't believe we actually got one of these on video. He's just like, yeah, you suck, bro. Technical file every day of the week. Watch these guys right here getting a scrum. Oh, no, I'm sorry. And the guy throws it. He just throws the ball up. I always tell players, ball doesn't come back down, I won't give you technical. I'm like, well, it's always going to come back back down. Well, you're always going to get technical for it. They slam the ball and it goes to the ceiling. Technical foul. They slam the ball and they catch it. All right, man. Just stop down a little bit. They throw the ball up like that. Technical foul. Uh, right here. This is the one I'm thinking of. That's the closest I've ever gotten to a fight in four years here. It was just a little shoving match. A little extra play. He gets a technical foul. No big deal. Move on. All right. You get to see what I called the other night. <coughs> yeah. All right. So we have this play. Here's what stemmed it. Watch this play right about. It's going to come right about here. Get a count. No big deal. Breaks through it. Passes it off. Passes it. Anybody see a foul there? You can be honest. Yeah. If you if you thought there was a foul right here on this steal, let me know. Who thought that was a foul? It's all right. You can you can raise your hand. All right. So there's a couple in this room who thought it was a foul. Now, mind you, that coach is sitting somewhere right about here. So we go down the floor. He is now barking in my ear. Right here he is. He's all six foot five, and I'm five foot eight on a good day. He doesn't like it. Guess what? Boop. Foul. So I call the foul. This is an automatic technical. He's yelling at me. Yeah. See that right there? He's attacking me. He goes, You're the reason both my big guys have two fouls. This is dead. <laughs> oh, hell no. This ain't happening tonight. So he's pointing at me. Guess what I do? I put the whistle in my mouth. That's how, that's how you administer a technical. Just let the man go. I didn't. I didn't go. Well, there I am. No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> technical foul right here, and I'm walking away. Guess what? If if I do it right here, this is I'm instigating it, right? If I'm like Boop, technical foul, and I start and I I walk away, what does he got to do? If he wants, if he's mad at me, he's got to follow me. I go like this, he follow me like, what, what, what are you doing? <laughs> now I'm going to toss you because you're coming at me. It's all right. Yes, ma'am. So, if you have to foul on a player like who? We don't have any coaches. I mean, rarely do we have any coaches. We haven't had coaches in my five years. If it's on a player, it goes straight to the player. So he, he shoots the back of Anybody on the other team can shoot on, on a, a, a technical foul. So if I give him a technical, so it goes down and say... A technical for him because you get two per game. It goes down as a personal foul. So if he's at four and it becomes five, he's out of the game. Or if he's at one, he goes to two. And it goes down as a team foul. So if they're at six, they go to seven. Our staff should know most of this. But if I had him a technical, he can't get another one. And it counts as a team foul and a personal foul. All right. All right, watch this right here. This is a good one. <laughs> Oh, oh. Yeah. That girl right there is just gimping along. I was impressed by the ladies here in the heels, like that one right there. She's motoring. She's motoring to get out there. So, here's what happens. <coughs> we have a foul. No big deal. He, he or she, I can't tell. He calls the foul. He goes away. This guy's just like, la da 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 da. The game's no big deal. Nobody's gonna fight. Kumbaya. Bam. We're gonna have a foul. We're gonna have a fight right here. Guess what? I want you to stop right about there. And I don't want you to go any closer. I want you to stop me like, come on, just keep throw keep throwing bows. <laughs> and back the hell away. Anybody comes off the bench, automatic ejection. Probably game's going to be over at this point in time anyway. So, we have that. You don't get in between them. Because what happens? I try to break up a fight and they're throwing haymakers. What's going to happen? <laughs> and I'm down. I don't want to pay you workers' comp. I don't want to have you out for a while. That's not fun. So, if that happens, you stay the hell away. 
Like, you know what? It's not the bar. It's not Friday night. You didn't say anything about my woman. We're good. You, you duke it out. You let them fight. That happens. It happens in these kind of games. So, that happens. Just let it go. I don't think you're going to have anybody in heels running across the floor like they did here. All these people are ejected. She's like, I'm getting out of here. She's like, oh, hell no, you ain't going after my woman. And then all of a sudden, here comes everybody. I tell you what, this one right here, she was motoring. And she was wearing heels that were like, she's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, good gracious almighty. <laughs> Last one I got to show you is don't be like this guy out here. He goes up for a rebound and his shorts come down. <laughs> yeah, his shorts, his, he got the pants in the middle of the game by accident. Right here on 15. <laughs> he goes up, his pants go down. <laughs> he was like, son of a god, god like. <laughs> I had to throw a lot of humor in at the end of the night. It happens. I told him, I you need to put that drawstring just a little bit tighter. I'm glad you were wearing underwear tonight. That could have been bad. All right, so here's the end of the night. Any questions? Was that, Tomorrow, what? Was that a technical? Hell no. <laughs> I give, the kid's embarrassed enough. I can't give him a technical. We're short, short, short falling down. Tomorrow night, we're up here. And then we'll move downstairs as well. So be up here. See you at 630. Have a wonderful night.